Hi, welcome to Filaments Holly. I'm Kenneth. Today we're going to be going over how I created this mask. From sculpting it in Blender, through printing, and through finishing. And at the end, you'll be able to go ahead and grab those STL files and make it yourself. So let's find out how I did it. Okay guys, this is going to be a bit of a speed painting with a narration versus an actual 100% tutorial, but I will explain all the steps. Now I got this head off of Thingiverse, link will be below, and it's a 100% scale head. And I'm just kind of using this as a form to build the mask on, and then what I'm going to use to help boolean out the mask after we're finished. So I'm going to go ahead and add a UV sphere here, and we're going to use that to sculpt with. Unfortunately not here, I actually added a circle. So we don't need a halo, let's get rid of that. And let's actually add a UV sphere. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this UV sp sphere up into the face, kind of scale it properly until I like the size of it, and kind of bring it closer to the forehead. I have room to sculpt. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a subsurface multiplier on this, and I'm going to apply it. Now I'm doing this just so that way I can go ahead and get more geometry for when I'm sculpting. Now I'm going to use the snake hook tool here. I think almost exclusively. I may use the smooth with shift some. Oh yeah, don't forget to turn on Dan Tapo. And I usually eye drop the sphere to figure out what I need to go ahead and do for the number there. Uh, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and just start pushing and pulling. It's really that simple. Okay, so also be, don't be afraid to actually push too far. I pushed too far right here and you can see the head underneath it is fine. You know, we're just going to go ahead and pull that back out. It's not going to be an issue. And just kind of completely cover the face now. Just so I can get an idea. Now I'm trying to push in the eyes here. And unfortunately I'm in the wrong area. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into x-ray mode. And kind of push where the eyes are. And now this will allow me to go ahead and just continue to sculpt around where I need to. Again, just use really big uh, general areas until you get the proportions right. And then start sculpting in more and more detail. Okay, now that I've got a lot of the sculpting done on this, it's not finished yet, but I've gotten to the point now where I want to add the teeth in. So we're going to go ahead and add in a cube for the pointy teeth, which sounds kind of weird, but we'll get there. Give me a second. I'm going to go ahead and try to size this cube to the generic size we want a tooth in it as a square. And then we're going to go ahead and put on the uh, subdivision modifier on here and add some more geometry now we're in edit mode and i'm just going to go ahead and put some loop cuts in here and then just kind of adjust those to make this pointier just so i can get that shape that i'm looking for that kind of like almost fang like shape And then after I'm done getting this tooth ready here, I am going to go ahead and add a mirror modifier to it. So I only have to make like one tooth essentially. So boom, that makes that, that you know, mirrors it on the other side of the mask, which is nice. And just adjust the, si uh, the size, and now I'm just duplicating them with Shift D and just making the teeth. That's really how easy this is. And you're going to see me mess around a little bit with them and maybe try some teeth ideas that did and didn't work until we get to the final product. Okay, so now we've gone back to sculpting, and I'm just going to put the gums in here and make those teeth look like they belong. 
and I'm also going to finish up some of the smaller just details now that I've got the teeth in. I can just really kind of tighten up this sculpt and make it look just perfect. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, after I finish adjusting everything here, I'm going to go ahead and combine everything together as a join, a boolean. I'm saving it here before I do so, just in case I need to come back to it and I make a mistake. It's always a good idea. And then I'm, after I'm done doing that, I'm going to boolean out the mask. So now the head's gone because I've booleaned it in. Now, this isn't my face, so it's not really going to fit my face exactly. Even if it did, I wouldn't want to, so I'm just using the snake hook tool basically push in the mask to give my face more room um just that simple and the reason it's uh, this color here now is because it's lower poly than the outside it's just kind of letting me know that and i'm also using the smooth with shift here a lot too that's why some of those ridges disappear and that is basically how we made the mask uh now we're just gonna go ahead and export it out to cura and get it printed All right, so we uh, we got this finished. I've already gotten it off of here, so it's kind of a little movie magic here. And we have our tree supports at the bottom, and I think those look pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those, and we're gonna do a test fit. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we got most of the supports out. We still got a couple bad spots, like right here and right here. And the inside looks pretty smooth, considering this printer is not great. It's a Monoprice Select V2. I'm not super happy with it. But let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like on and see if it fits. I'm really, really excited. So, take off the glasses. And it seems like the hollowing out thing did perfectly. We still got to print the bottom half, and that's the next print on our list. But it looks like this is going to fit. Uh, I even have enough room in here. And we're going to go ahead and glue in straps into this area after I get the bottom and I get a good fit for where they need to be. And maybe do a little bit of slight sanding in here. But I think this is going to be really cool. I think it's going to work really well. So I'm really excited. Okay, it's fresh out of the freezer. Let's see if I can just pop it off and boom. Even left the tree supports there. Very nice. All right. Let's get this and see how our fit is. I'm very, very excited about this. Okay, that looks good. So we're gonna have some areas here we gotta do a little bit of filler in. I'm not really surprised by that. But let's do a test fit and see what it looks like. Oh. All oh yeah, that's gonna be a nice mask. That looks cool as hell. So let's go ahead and get this glued together properly, and then we can start filling and sanding. Okay, so here we are outside. I got the mask already glued together and it's dry. I've also gone ahead and did a little bit of filler on it as well. I tried using a new filler that was supposed to be water-based. I didn't really like it. Um, it smelled kind of like clear gesso if I've ever used that. So we're going to go back to the spray filler on this, and obviously I'm doing it outside where there's a lot of really good ventilation. So uh, let's cut to the B-roll of me going ahead and spraying this on my lazy suit. Okay, so I have my spray gun here and I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of like give it a white one. Okay, so if we look here, we're still getting some areas with the seams not being right, especially when you see there, you can see them. And we still have some rough spots in these areas. It's hard to see on camera. Some rough spots there, and then some more rough spots there. So what we're going to do go ahead and do is do another round of spray on this after I've sanded. Now that I've sanded this one, and let it dry, and just do another sanding, and we'll keep doing that till we get it smooth. 
So we're using just spray paint that I got from Lowe's basically. And it's got primer built into it. So this stuff is working pretty good for me. Okay, so uh, we have the mask painted and based color. I'm pretty happy with the quality. It could be better, it could be worse. I mean, let's be honest here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to do some airbrushing for the first time. Uh, usually you spray paint and then go on ahead over that with just the normal brushes. But we're going to try some airbrushing today. I got a brush and let's try it. See how it goes. Okay, so I have learned a lot about airbrushing the last couple of minutes. And I'm hoping that this time I've got enough paint to mixture, oh, to water mixture to get to go through the brush. There we go. And not beat up like it's water. Now we're getting what we need. All right, we're going to let that dry. And then I'm going to start putting on, layering on darker and darker colors. Okay, we thickened up the paint a little. Let's see if this looks any better now. Okay, so I've already gone ahead and did a couple more highlights, and now I've gone ahead and mixed an even darker red, almost a black. And I'm going to go ahead and use this now to go ahead and do some of the shadow in the eyes and stuff like that. I'm just going to layer it in slowly. All right, guys. So we got the airbrushing done. We don't have the strap on yet. And we don't have the teeth painted. I'm going to hand paint those. But this is looking really nice. I'm really happy with the way the airbrushing came out. Um, I think it's going to be a really, really cool mask. I don't know if I'll use it for Halloween. I might use that one. We'll see. But still, it's nice to have options. Okay guys, so got the last piece in just now from Amazon. So we got the mask finished and it looks great. I'm very pleased with it. But if I look down, it falls off. Not really a surprise. So how are we going to prevent that from happening? Well, we ordered one of my favorite things. A visor! Yay! But in all seriousness though, I like these kind of visors for masks because they're made of nice thick fabric and they've got Velcro on the back and it's like $9. You just cut off the sides and glue it in and you're done. That's what I did for this guy. It's just a black visor, same type, and just glue it right in. And it works perfectly. So that's what we're going to do today. So what we want to do is cut as close to the bill as possible. We may not need that much, but, you know, we can't get more back. If it turns out we cut sooner than we needed it. So that's why I always cut there. And now... We don't really need this. It can be thrown out. But we got what we need here. And that can easily be just done right there. I like to go ahead and adjust it so that way it goes below the curve of the head. And then glue it in like right there. So let's go ahead and get gluing. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and use some uh, Gorilla Gel Glue. I really like this stuff. I find that it works pretty well. And we got our mask here. So I'm going to go ahead and try this on. I know you can't see this part on camera. And I'm going to mark where I think it should go. I'm thinking up right in those areas. So let's go ahead and 
See if that even fits. Did I make it wide enough? Oh, it will fit in that area. Perfect. Okay. Get my peepers back on. Start us a glue one. Hopefully there's enough glue in this tube. Okay, we're just going to squeeze that right in there. And we're just going to hold it for a few seconds, just like that. And then we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so we got both sides glued on now. And I think it's going good. I think it's time for a test fit. So let's go to the other camera. All right, so I'm ready to show it off. We got the glue done. It seems relatively dry. Could probably cure for a little while longer, but we're just kind of doing a test fit here. Let's see. Did I do it right? And boom. We now have a really cool mask. Perfect for Halloween. Or just scaring people you don't like. So if you want to go ahead and make this for yourself, there's a link down below where you can go ahead and get the Thingiverse file. I've got it both split like I had to do it here and it's one piece. And of anything I used in here that I could find a link on Amazon for is linked below. So if you enjoyed this, go ahead and like and subscribe. I've got a lot of cool other projects coming up and I hope you will enjoy them as much as I enjoyed making them. Now I don't think I did everything the best way you could possibly do it here, but I'm still learning and I'm hoping you're going to be learning with me. So hope to see you again soon. Talk to you later. Bye. I am the Batman.